Hello and welcome to Pocket NC's Q-Tip Tuesday. I'm Q, an applications engineer at Pocket NC, and while the production team is back at Pocket NC headquarters cranking out machines and filling orders, and in the interest of social distancing, today's tip comes from my home shop. Stick around if you want to know how to make using our ER40 call fixture even easier. Now, as many of you know, the R40 call fixture does a great job of centering stock around the B axis of rotation here. So repeating that position when we go to set up the machine is a piece of cake. The one position that is still a bit of a challenge to match on the machine is the stock's height above the B table, basically from here to here. The obvious way to do this is measuring from here to here and then taking that measurement to the machine and setting the stock using that. Unfortunately, due to the difficulty of getting a measurement directly to the B table, this leaves us with only awkward and less accurate methods of measuring how much the stock is sticking up from the B table. Today's tip makes this process much simpler and more reliable by giving us something to press the stock up against before we tighten down our ER40 call it fixture. We will start in the CAM software, in our case, Fusion 360. As you can see, we have inserted our part, aligned it with our ER40 call it fixture, and begun creating tool pads. To make this trick work, no matter how far from the B table you decide to set your stock, we need to create a tool path that is tied to the part and its stock. I find that using an adaptive clearing tool path works best. Since I've already got one built, we will just open this one and edit it and walk through the tabs. On the tool tab, just have a tool selected and make, make sure our speeds and feeds are correct. Uh, no different than creating a normal operation here. In the geometry tab, we need to select the pocket selection and the tool orientation that will force the tool to approach the top of the stock that we are trying to set. So in this case, this direction. Moving to the heights tab, for the top height, we need to have stock top selected and for the bottom height, we need to have stock top selected. This will keep the tool path from actually facing off the 0 0.02 inches or 20 thou of stock that is on the top of our part that we defined in our setup. It will simply bring the tool to the top of the stock and then cut outwards in a spiral pattern, possibly trimming some high spots, but overall staying at the top of what we've defined as our stock. For the passes tab, we'll set our optimal load and we'll make sure that our stock to leave is off. We want to make sure we cut exactly on the plane that we expect. And finally, in the linking tab, we just need to make sure our ramp type is set to plunge so the machine will approach the stock in a straight line instead of in a spiral. When that's all done, we can hit OK. And as you can see, I've named my operation stock height set. Uh, it doesn't matter what you name it as long as you understand uh, that that is what that operation is doing and used for and that it's the first operation in your program. Now that we have that operation created, we are ready to post process the whole setup and take a look at the G code that is created. So we'll right click, post process, fill these out accordingly. It's important that the open NC file in editor box is checked. Hit OK. I'm going to name this what I'll remember. I'll go ahead and save. And then the G code editor will come up. Before we close the G code editor and move on to uploading the G code to the machine, we need to add a few lines of code. To find the spot in the code where we need to add our custom lines, scroll down looking for the first lines of the spiral adaptive toolpath. This can be recognized by the start of a large block of X and Y moves. Once the right spot has been found, enter a couple of spaces above the first line of X and Y moves. The first line of code we need to add is M0, M5, which pauses the machine and turns the spindle off. The next line, will be a comment, so it needs to be in parentheses. It will be 
parentheses, push stock to tool, press start. This will remind us why the machine is paused. The third line will turn the spindle back on at a specified spindle speed. In my case, it will be M3 for spindle forward, and then S9500, because that is the speed my spindle was running before we stopped it with the M5 command. You can find that value higher up in the code by looking for an S code. The final line of code that we're going to put in will pause the machine for a few seconds so that the spindle can get up to speed before following the spiral toolpath. It will be G4P2. The P value represents the number of seconds the machine will stay paused. Feel free to adjust this time to better suit your needs. Finally, before closing the G-code editor, make sure to save the changes you've made. Now that we have our code ready, we can start to get our machine ready. We'll start by putting in our ER40 collet fixture. With the bottom ring of the fixture installed and screwed all the way down, we'll grab our appropriately sized collet for the stock we're using and the top ring of the fixture. We'll tighten the top ring just enough so that it can't be lifted up and is still nice and loose. We're going to leave our stock out for the time being. Next, we will make sure that the right tool has been loaded and that it has been measured. Now we'll upload the G-code to the machine. Finally, with the machine completely set up and a finger hovering over the e-stop button, we can press the start pause button on the front of the machine to start the program or click the run from button. Once the machine's gone home, the start pause button will begin to blink again. We'll press that. If our code and everything is correct up to this point, the machine will have moved to this position and paused. As long as everything looks correct, we can install our stock and slide it out to our tool. Once our stock slid all the way out to our tool, we can use our ER40 collet fixture wrench to tighten down the collet. From here, we can simply press the green blinking start pause button again. The machine will turn the spindle back on, lull for the given amount of time, and then proceed to moving along the spiral adaptive toolpath. Likely not cutting much as this plane should represent the top of the stock, not the top of the part. After that, the machine should carry on with the rest of the operations in the program. And that does it for this Q-Tip Tuesday. I hope this was a helpful tip for you as you use your pocket NC machine. As usual, feel free to reach out to us with any questions or comments you may have. See you next time.